So, hello, I'm glad you're all here. Welcome to The Truth About Downsizing and Decluttering. I'd like to begin uh, by recognizing our generous sponsors who make it possible for us to continue these ongoing seminars at no cost to you. So we, uh, Slow Happy Homes is a sponsor, Team Zoe with Cross Country Mortgage. If you're interested in, she does all mortgages, but if you're interested at all to know more about reverse mortgages, that's your gal. Central Coast Transitions, who is also a, a speaker today, Cell House Media, and we have uh, Eric at the back um, filming, Senior Living Consultants, and um, Charmaine is sitting right over there, and Estate 360. Dylan is sitting right here in the middle, and I think I got everybody. Okay, good. And then I'd like to thank my helpers. You all met Mackenzie at the front desk when you got your raffle ticket. That's my granddaughter. And Bailey Pewter, who is my partner in crime, <laughs> in and out of work. And my husband, Larry, uh, is here today to help out. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely a family affair, right? Um, <clears throat> Before we begin, I want to let you know the restrooms are right outside the door, both the men's room and the women's room, and uh, we are not going to take a break, so if you want to get up and use them throughout the seminar, please feel free to do that, and, or if you need a refill on your coffee or whatnot. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind, turn your phones off because just at the point where I'm saying something super critical, <laughs> it'll go off. And so um, you don't want me, because I'm, I'm a senior too, you don't want me to lose my train of thought. <laughs> and that's what Bailey's here for, because if I do, she's there to prompt me. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our panelists in just a moment. And uh, I'd like to share uh, a little bit about Seco Seniors. I'm the founder of Seco Seniors. I'm Nancy Pewter. And our mission is to assist older homeowners and their families with late decision, with later in life decisions and the complexities of a late in life move. So we do that through educational seminars and an amazing resource team uh, that we can connect you with. Our services are completely free, and um, our resource team is comprised. Now, obviously, if you hire someone on the resource team, you would most likely have to pay them. But we do have uh, legal services, financial services, insurance, uh, in-home care referrals, um, senior um, communities. What else, Bailey? everybody. You need somebody, we got them. Yeah. And if we don't know them, one of these guys that we know will. Right, right. Uh, we have uh, hospice and um, dementia consulting and geriatric care, estate sales, and move management. So if you're even thinking about making a move in the next year or two, give us a call because all of these people that we have on our resource team have been vetted, we've used them, we know they're good people. The worst thing that can happen is for you to have a fall and have your kids just start Googling, mm -hmm. you know? And so this way you can be prepared and it's just a matter of giving us a call. Okay, we are also realtors. We, do, we sell real estate, which is our day job. So if at any point you decide you do wanna sell your home, we would love to speak to you, and that's going to be my only sales pitch, okay? Um, we are also going to begin by saying the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mackenzie, where'd she go? Ask her to come in, because we've asked Mackenzie to lead us. understand if you like it's not necessary but if you like yes absolutely so sorry <laughs> come on up here i know she's multitasking <laughs> <laughs> enjoy 
enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I think we are finally ready to get started. Uh, first, I would like to begin by asking about what maybe what your first thought is in one or two words when you think about downsizing or decluttering. What a curse it'll be to my kids because of how much stuff I have. <laughs> okay, it's a curse. Okay. Not a curse, but like it, it wouldn't be a blessing. Let's put it that way. Right. I, I just have too much it. stuff. I better do it so I don't leave all this to the kids. Right. Yeah. Okay, yes. Maybe your quick question, how, how, how do we downsize and get rid of our stuff? Yeah, I think how do I do it? Yeah. How do I do it? What about overwhelm? Does anybody yeah. feel overwhelmed? Yes. Okay. And how about dread? <laughs> yep. Is that another one? Okay. So we're here today to chase all those negative feelings out of your mind, your body, your soul. <laughs> and you're going to leave here today with tools to help you attack that project and go through it systematically and all the while continuing to live a normal life. Okay, your life is not going to stop so, you know, so that you could do this. And all of us are available for a little help and uh, tips along the way if you need to call us after the seminar. But I think that you are going to be surprised at how much you walk away with. Um, I was just going to say something and I totally forgot, so I'm sure it'll come back to me. Oh, yes. Jot down your questions because we will not be answering questions throughout the seminar, but at the end we will have a 10-minute question and answer session. If that starts to go on too long, we'll just wrap it up and our panelists will be here after the session so you can feel free to approach them and ask them any questions that you have. So let's get going with the introductions. Number one, Clarice Knepper. Clarice is the owner and operator of Central Coast Transitions and she specializes in personal move management, has a direct approach that encompasses a wide variety of solutions to help you either stay in your home or will help you to manage a move to a new home. Dylan Deaton, who is the owner and operator of 360 Estate Sales. Dylan has taken the ordinary, antiquated business of estate sales and created extraordinary results. He simplified the process. His simplified process alleviates the complications and unwanted liabilities of a traditional estate sale while simultaneously achieving better profits for his clients. Who likes that? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Dylan has been so successful with his system that he now has several locations throughout the state. Alexandra Morris. Alexandra is a geriatric care management and dementia consulting firm. She's the owner and operator. She's also known as an aging life care professional. Alex's 30 years of experience includes working with adult care services, acting as a state certified ombuds, ombudsman, and for many years directly with the Alzheimer's Association. Since 2010, Alex has been independently advocating for seniors with a caring and holistic approach. So we're gonna get going. I'm gonna start with Clarice. I'm gonna ask everybody to just, you know, reiterate who you are and what you do, and then um, and then we'll ask you the first question. So Clarice. Do, do I push it up to? Be on. Is it on? Can everybody hear me okay? Uh -huh. Perfect. So, no? Is it on? I'm just gonna turn up a little, go for it. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, Clarice Knepper, owner of Central Coast Transitions, um, what happened? We were sharing how long we <coughs> have been here. I've been in the community for 50 years and uh, left the corporate life better. Hold on. No, I didn't think that. I'm sorry. I don't think it is on. There you go. Tap it. It's, the button won't slide up, I don't think. It's not moving. Maybe. Oh, there we go. You did it. Oh, the miracle worked. Okay. Why do we have an 
enough sponsors for Seacoast Seniors, we are going to invest in a privately owned amp. <laughs> It'll work every time. And it's going to be, so if you know anyone who would like to sponsor us, let us know. Um, <laughs> Okay, you want can to you hear now? Over? Oh, I yeah, can hear yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. So there yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Clarice Knepper, owner of Central Coast Transitions. I've um, been here for over 50 years in the county, so I'm very familiar with it. And I've left a 40-year corporate life to start something that I feel is uh, passionate for me, which is helping the elderly. Um, so Great. You well, please? your first question, Clarice, is uh, please share... Uh, or could you please share a couple of tips on where to begin a downsizing or decluttering process project? Be happy to, thank you. So it's complex, so I've, I've written some notes, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna refer to them so I don't miss anything and don't go down a rabbit hole and, and not get <laughs> tips sent out to you. So um, I would like to start by identifying the difference between downsizing and decluttering. Downsizing is the actual relocation to a, uh, from a larger home to a smaller one. Well, downsizing, excuse me, uh, well, decluttering is removing unnecessary or unwanted items from an overcrowded or untidy space. For successful downsizing to occur, you have to do the decluttering process. So regardless of the space that you want to declutter, whether it's a cupboard or a closet or a room or a home or an entire property, bottom line is you want to change your environment. So understanding the root causes of why it's, the clutter has happened will help you in the process of changing. So typically, clutter is caused by words associated with poor and lack, poor storage systems, lack of space for typical storage systems, poor behavior at putting items away. I know that's touchy. Uh, lack of will from acquiring new items, poor purging behaviors or processes, usually it's the process, and lack of knowledge on how to purge or organize. So how do we change our environment especially if you lack the knowledge or where to go or how to do it i know we're not supposed to ask questions but i don't know if anyone else i cannot possibly write that fast <laughs> is that okay okay don't worry okay yeah don't worry don't worry You'll i'm here afterwards over okay. she's here afterwards and and and, well, and i will be going to be recorded yes okay and i will be giving you a ton of tips and ideas okay, okay. so <laughs> okay. We try to get you out in the, just a little bit over an hour so that uh, you don't get too tired. Okay. Um, so to start with, did you know that like you, all of your items need a dedicated home? And if you don't have a plan to have a home for it, you've just created the clutter. So in other words, everything you bring into your house has to play, have a place to put it back into. Okay. So understanding that is actually the beginning of your decluttering process. So I recommend, and I'll slow down here, six basic steps. Start simple. Develop a plan with measured accomplishments. Implement the plan by chunking out extended, dedicated time to purge. Do it over weeks and months versus trying to do it in a day. Focus on what you want to keep. Okay. Separate those from unwanted items to be dealt with later via selling, donating, or trash. Reward thyself for a job well done throughout the process. Who doesn't like getting a gold star? It motivates you. Okay. And then uh, repeat the process on a quarterly or yearly basis so that it's maintained. Okay. Specifically, commit to an immediate plan as well as an ongoing plan to prevent clutter from reclaiming your home again. Sorting through decades of belongings in one day or a weekend is taxing emotionally, mentally, and physically, especially if it's taken years to accumulate. I recommend calendar your time in one hour time blocks with 10 minute breaks for up to four hours a day for a period of one to two weeks or months, depending on the size or scope of the work. Group and purge large categories of like items, bringing all of one type of item into one place. Then pulling out from that pile only the items you want to keep. That then determines the sheer volume of what you need to store in creating their home. Determine and acquire that storage system of for the kept items. Place the said items in the dedicated home. Next, plan on how you want to disperse the unwanted items. Again, selling, donating, or trash. 
Reward thyself for a job well done at the end of each day, and of course, especially when the project is done. Start again on the next area or item. Chunking out time in shorter increments and focusing on one item <coughs> will give you time to adjust to the letting go process. Rewarding yourself provides the motivation to continue the process. Okay, number two, tackle item by item, not the space itself. Clarice, can we stop you right there? Yes, please. Okay. Five, we're going to try to keep it to five minutes. Oh, okay. Each question. Okay. Uh, but we will get back to that, and we can work that back in. Dylan, would you like to introduce yourself again? Sure, absolutely. Um, my name is Dylan Deaton. I'm the owner of the State 360. We are an estate sale and downsizing liquidation firm uh, headquartered in San Luis Obispo. We have several locations throughout the state of California, including the Central Valley and down in Riverside County as well. Okay, Dylan. My question for you is you often get involved pretty close to the beginning of the project. And so what else can you share with us in addition to what Clarice has been sharing? She has a bunch more to share, I know. But we have to do all this in an hour. But what else can you share with us that you feel is critical in the process of the distribution of the unwanted assets? Sure, absolutely. And I, I, you know, Clarice does a lot with the actual process of downsizing where we're more involved with the selling aspect of that. Um, but I think some tips that go along with that are really deciding uh, firmly what it is that you want to keep and what you want to sell. Uh, oftentimes we find families that have taken things and putting them in storage or into their daughter's garage uh, and then call us years later after, you know, suffering the expense of having that stuff stored um, and, you know, oftentimes not stored correctly so it's deteriorating in value as well. Yeah, so you would say uh, storage. You were doing some uh, figures on what it costs to most people, the average person spends on storage uh, to store maybe $2,000 worth of items sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. We costing them over time. Right. We recently uh, had a client that had a storage unit um, that was attached with the sale of the property at a storage facility. The length of time that they had had the items in storage and what they had paid for that um, equated to over $26,000. The contents within uh, was about $2,500 worth of items. <laughs> so it's, it's that part of things is, is, is being able to let go of those items. And that's, and that's a hard process to go through. Um, but the way we look at it is you purchase those items because they fit your specific needs at that time and you enjoyed them in your home and you loved them um, and meticulously cared for them over that time um, but at some point you know when you are downsizing and you're moving to a much smaller location um, those items those tough decisions have to be made and passed on to somebody else and maybe make those decisions now before yeah. you're moving mm -hmm. on who maybe you'd like to give it to um, okay, thank you, Dylan. Yeah. Alex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Alexandra Morris uh, with Geriatric Care Management and Dementia Consulting. Everybody calls me Alex. Uh, so, a geriatric care manager, it really, it takes a holistic approach. So, I work with these folks and other folks. Uh, to make whatever it is that needs to happen, happen. So I do an assessment and care plan. I look at the whole situation for an elder and their family, and then make recommendations based on what I've learned, that, and then implement them. So essentially, in a, in a nutshell, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. So um, am I on question one? No, yes. I'm down to question two. No, it's still question one. No, I would have. Oh, no. <laughs> Alex, what is a common situation you observe with clients facing a downsize or down or decluttering project? Yes. So I, I first want to start. So I deal with uh, often the emotional reasons why we uh, uh, accumulate, how we accumulate, and then how we can let these things go. These folks are the experts at helping you do that right I'm the one that helps you 
let that stuff go. So from a, a, a standpoint, psychosocial standpoint, in our culture, in youth and middle age, we tend to accumulate. Not everybody, but uh, myself included. Our fam maybe got we got married. Our families are growing. Maybe we inherited stuff from our parents, right? So we it's all about accumulation, at least at first. And my gosh, Amazon has made that so easy, right? <laughs> it's like scaringly too easy to accumulate stuff. Uh, so here we find ourselves in middle age or older age. And we look in our garage, and it's so overwhelming that we close the door, or our, or we have storage units, or our fam, our closets are so full we don't even know what's in them. And especially, we need to listen to people who love us, who say, "Mom, do you really need?" We, I have. I will say, I have. It's not all my stuff, but I have a three uh, garage, three car garage. And uh, it's looking pretty full. I can walk through it, but it's a little scary. Okay, so I'm with you. I'm one of you, all right? Um, I know I need to work on this too. So, so what keeps us? So I work a lot with the adult children. So I talk to the adult children about reasonable expectations, which is what Clarice was talking about. Not doing it quickly, if at all possible. Let's move slowly. Pushing an older person to meet our perception as a middle-aged person. So the developmental need of a middle-aged person is focus, focus, we gotta get things done. The developmental need of an older adult is legacy work, which can be tied to your stuff and maintenance of control. <laughs> you, you're the boss of you, and you're gonna decide you know, when this project is gonna be done. So a younger person, your person, the people you love, pushing you almost never works and creates frustration. So what I counsel younger people is to stop. That we let us avoid pushing and cre creating feelings of resentment and feelings of being overwhelmed. Make sense? I, and I will expand on that later. Later. Thank you, Alex. Okay, Clarice. Thank you. Um, you're welcome to add more of those mm -hmm. tips or bullet point them, or we can get <coughs> all of you a bullet pointed list mm -hmm. uh, later. Mm -hmm. But I did have a uh, second question for you. Well, you know what? That was my second question. Can you give us some more tips? More? Yeah. yeah, I'd be happy so, to. Yeah. So please okay. continue. And I'm going to just pick and choose out of here, you know, because yes. I do have a long list of them. Um, once you have decided where and how things are going to be stored, okay, stop the flow of things coming in without having a plan on how to address them. So if you've got a specific space that, let's just say, kitchen gadgets go into, think about and decide what's coming out to put that in. Otherwise, you have to start over again and create a whole new space, a larger space. So decide when you're acquiring it, what are you going to do it, how is it going to you know, fit with what you've got in the space that you have to accommodate that. Um, decide not to keep things out of guilt or obligation as that drains the life actually from you. So if Aunt Susie made you a sweater and it doesn't fit your style, don't keep it and take up valuable real estate space in your drawer or your dresser. Um, Take a picture of it and send it to her. That will honor her, you know, and then go ahead and donate it to the women's shelter because they are maybe in need of it, okay? Um, as I mentioned, pacing yourself is really key. Pl put an ongoing disposal plan in place now, okay? You're focusing on what you're keeping, and you know that this is going to be kind of like forever, so put a plan in place. Figure out and allocate space, dedicated space, to accumulate items that are going to be donated, sold, or trashed away from everything else that you're keeping. Um, think outside the box for storage solutions. You know, going in and buying ready-made um, filing systems that have labels that don't match the way you think, you're not gonna, it's not going to work for you. But thinking outside the box, you can take a three-shelf small bookcase mounted on top of a three-drawer dresser, earthquake that, you've now <coughs> got double the storage, but only one real estate space being taken up on your floor space. They have drop-down shelves in the ce um, from the ceilings of garages that add space. Um, getting the right size storage systems, like tubs, don't go oversized so that you can fill it with more stuff. What happens, you're mixing now. 
And then you create that clutter chaos again because you can't find what you're looking for. Um, and again, I'm just gonna, uh, if I can take one more second to talk about the keep rule. Keeping items easily accessible for those that you use regularly, okay? If, if those are daily, weekly, or monthly. Next, the occasionally used items, store that in a, you know, accordingly to that. That might be in the closets or out, you know, in, the, in, in a separate room, you know. And then the ones, the memorabilia, the keepsake that you're not going to display, store that for long term. Because you may not get into it for five years or it might be going down to, you know, your granddaughter. But that doesn't need to be in your house where you've got your daily activity. It can be in the back of the attic or the back of the garage. <coughs> So I think someone, you know, you just really need to determine who's running your life. Is it you or your clutter? You know, take control of the clutter. That's okay. good. You know, one of the things that I've heard you share before, because Clarissa's been a speaker a few times for us, so she has so much to offer, um, is that just start from the end. So if you are, if you want to have your project done in 30 days, or because maybe you're moving, or you just don't want this to be going on for six months, um, start with your end mm -hmm. and commit to a certain amount of time each day, maybe 20 minutes to two hours a day, but no more than that. And you will get there. And mark it on the calendar every time you complete mm -hmm. a time frame each day, and before you know it, you're just about ready to wrap up the whole process. I call those taking your baby steps. Right. Because then you steps. can turn around and look at how far you've come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Dylan, I apologize. I should have asked you this question first, <coughs> but you're very quick on your feet, as we all know who have worked with you before. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, so now that we have a good start on how to begin, share with us a couple of your best tips on what to do with all of our stuff and why your method of liquidating possessions is not only different but hassle-free. So the the method in which we handle estate sale or downsizing events is a little bit unique in the fact that we do the whole process through an online format. Um, the way that that works is that our team would come out to your property, we would go through the contents of the home that you are selling, those items are then photographed and inventoried uh, where they are then marketed and advertised on a national platform. Uh, so not only are you able to reach a much broader audience than doing um, a garage sale or an in-person event at your house, you're also simultaneously reducing the risks that are inherent when doing an in-person event. <clears throat> so we don't have to have hundreds of people uh, come to the house, you know, all the unwanted foot traffic, um, stuff getting broken, stolen, the home getting damaged. Um, so it's really built into just a neat, efficient way um, to get all of those items sold at once and in one shot and out of the home rather than listing them individually on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and spending the next eight years trying to empty your home. That's a good okay. idea. Thank yeah. you, Dylan. Okay, Alex. You, you know, you and I have spoken a lot, and uh, especially this week, about the emotions and the chaos that we've all witnessed when we meet older adults and their families who are trying to uh, put together a move. So can you offer up some tips on how to com combat the negative emotions and bring down the stress level when a crisis has occurred and things need to be done quickly? Okay, you, you threw me with the quickly because I'm about to say move as slowly as you can. <laughs> okay. um, ru rushing rushing uh, almost ne is never successful and actually takes longer uh, than, pace, as you've, we've all said, pacing ourselves as much as you can, as much as you can. Uh, so I have a, a quick story. Uh, my favorite is the roller skates story. So daughter's helping mom go through her things. She finds this old beat up pair of roller skates and proceeds to throw them away. And mom starts <coughs> to cry. Okay, so she stopped and, and asked her what the significance of these roller skates were to her. And she began to explain that when she was 17, that she got a job working at a roller skate place and that she really enjoyed and actually got pretty darn good 
at being on the floor. Uh, they promoted our, I forget what the title is, but you know, whoever it is that's out there on the floor and kind of keeps people under control uh, because she was so uh, solid, so good on those roller skates. And it, it just reminded her of her youth and just a different fun time in her life. And then she was able to throw those roller skates away. So understand that certain items, not everything, but certain items have sentimental value. Now, do you need that whole garage full of stuff that your mom, you know, that you inherited from your mom to remember your mom? No, you don't. But maybe taking some time and looking at photographs, looking at the jewelry, and talk about any significance of any kind of knickknacks. And actually, smaller things very likely can be kept, right? So taking the time to reminisce. And then if you're noticing, and you're always noticing, if your person is getting stressed out, getting defensive, etc., is you take a break. You go and you have a cup of coffee or tea or ice cream or my favorite, a glass of wine, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you go on a walk. Moving is great for the brain. It just helps recalibrate you. Uh, you go out for a meal as a treat, as uh, you were saying. So, and then you ask, can we go back in and finish that box? You know, it's permission. And if it's no, then it's like, okay, I'll be by tomorrow or whenever the, the interval is. But uh, make accomplish small accomplishments, mm -hmm. one box at a time. And I, I suggest, this has worked very well for me, is once it's been decided, the, the trash pile goes in the trash, once it's been decided, it, never to be seen again. And the giveaway pile, we don't wait until we've finished the whole project. We load that stuff in the car and we take it over wherever, the shelter or Goodwill or wherever. Get out of sight, out of mind, so we can start fresh. So it's, it's about connection and respect and having a satisfying time maybe getting to know your loved one a little bit better because you took the time to do that. Yes, and then also the pile of what you're gonna sell or what you would oh, like to sell. Oh, certainly, yes. Okay. So one of the things we do with Seacoast Seniors that we focus on is helping to educate our, the families of older adults and our older adults into making these kind of decisions so you're not rushed before the crises happens. Um, unfortunately, as we get older, it's most often not if a crisis occurs, it's when the crisis occurs. And I know most of you probably want to live in your home forever, 95% of people do, but the truth is, is that that's what they want, but the truth is 70% don't. There, something happens where they do have to move. So our focus is on getting you to just think ahead and make some decisions now. Speak to your children and let them know what you're thinking because believe it or not, they have no idea what you want. And, um, and that's really what we're all about is connecting you and through education, prompting you to um, think and have the discussions with your loved ones that seem to keep getting shelved and procrastinated. So I don't know if anybody in here is a procrastinator, but <laughs> for the one person in here that's like that, um, <laughs> this is for you. Okay, so um, all right, so now we're back to Clarice again, and we do have the same three questions for, I mean, the same question for all three panelists. What is the number one concern or question that you're asked by downsizers or declutterers, and what do you tell them? Well, um, usually it's how I got into this business, but <laughs> because it's not easy. But um, really, it, it's um, how to get started. You know, wh where do we begin? You know, it's overwhelming. I, I heard that word used earlier today. And, and just knowing that um, it doesn't have to be done tonight, you know, and uh, I always say take a deep breath, you know, and let's come up with a plan. Because um, a lot of people respond better knowing what the plan is. Some respond better to actually having it calendared out so that they can visually see it. We have clients actually put it up on their refrigerator. Um, I also recommend, you know, when you're doing the timing, and I, I recommend doing, you know, so many hours, and but work for a few minutes, and then, but you set the alarm. 
So that's twofold. So if you are one that gets distracted easily and you go down a memory lane and you hear the alarm buzzing, it's going to bring you back around and refocus you. Where if you're like myself, who goes on and on and on and on and on, I need the buzzer to say, whoa, stop, take the much needed break. Um, so at, setting an alarm really helps, you know, and just so it paces you. I, you know, we've mentioned that numerous times today. Pace yourself. This doesn't have to be done tonight, you know. Um, but it, it's, it's, if you look at this, there's some questions that I turn around and ask the client, you know, and, and of course we go through the, you know, are you using it now? How do you use it? How do you currently store it? You know, what's the ideal vision look like for you? Um, but we, and what I'm trying to do is finding out if they're just trying to keep the stuff for the sake of keeping it because they might use it in two to five years. You know, is it broken? Oh, I'm going to get around to fixing that someday, you know, um, uh, you know, as opposed to immediately, you know, so that you can use it and improve the quality of your life by using it. So there are some questions that we'll go through in our process. Um, so I, I don't know if I answered specifically yours, I but I've got more tips to follow later. Okay, great. Dylan, the number one question or concern that people approach you with. How much is my piano worth? <laughs> so, so, but I, I think the value question does come up quite often, and I think that that really holds people up sometimes, and they get stuck in the process because they are concerned about value. And I think it's important to, to look at that, that in most cases, an estate sale or, or downsizing and selling off our possessions um, is not going to result in a life-changing amount of income. Um, you know, the, the dining set that we may have paid five, 10, 15, 20,000 for 30, 40, 50 years ago is not going to be worth that in today's market. Um, and so I think those are understanding the way markets shift and understanding the way that values change over time is important. Um, and not to get stuck on what am I going to sell this item for rather than, you know, if I can get this in, into the into the home of a new family that can appreciate it and cherish it um, and love it the way you did for years to come is, I think, the most important way to look at things. That's good, Dylan. Very That's right. <coughs> Alex, same question. What would you say is the number one concern or question that people have for you when they're getting ready for a, um, a major change? Typically when I get involved is we're looking at a move. Uh, so I work with families around, okay, what are we gonna take to the new location? You know, do you have the measurements? Have you thought about what pieces of furniture that makes sense for you to take in a smaller environment? And then of course, you're, you're gonna of course take your personal items, your, your clothes or jewelry or grooming things, all those things. And then we whittle down to what knickknacks, what art, what pictures, what things have personal meaning to us that will accentuate the new environment. And I usually suggest that folks treat themselves, I know this is counter to what we've been talking about, but you treat yourself to something new some small thing, a new vase with fresh flowers in it for your, your kitchen table, something that signifies this is a new uncluttered environment, you know, a new future as opposed to thinking of loss. Now, if, if somebody, you know, has been desiring or would like maybe a new TV, TVs aren't very expensive nowadays, right? Maybe an, a new TV that works much better than your current one does. Or maybe because the space is smaller, a little smaller dining room set that's just nice and pretty and new. Something fresh for the new environment to kind of reward yourself for making s such a big transition. So we think about what is gonna go in that new spot. We make that happen. And then if there's time, we can do the whole process that we've talked about, sifting through things, et cetera. Sometimes, I hate to say it, but sometimes I recommend that stuff go into storage, but I will say, not forever and ever. Usually once the older adult gets used to the new environment and the new rhythms and activities and people, they, they want to visit and go through that storage less and less. 
and then the adult children can take care of that. So it doesn't go on for years for twenty six thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, you can't. I can't say enough about rewarding yourself. I love your tip about buying yourself anything from a, a new vase with flowers to a new little table or TV. But also, in the during the process, it's important to treat yourself too. Yeah, you, I mean, we're not telling you to buy a TV every day. Mm -hmm. and uh, a lar make a large expenditure every day. But uh, Mary, ask Dan to give you a foot massage. Yeah. Because you spent, <laughs> well, be good. You spent you know, an hour in the front closet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dan, vice versa. What's my reward? <laughs> What's your reward? <laughs> What's my reward? Uh, tell all your friends to come to me. <laughs> they would like to sell their house. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, we're going to open it up to the question and answer session now, and who would like to begin? Okay, right here. Uh, I like and your, try to speak oh, loudly, because okay. um, we don't have our microphone. I was wondering if Clarice has a list, a written list of yeah. your tips. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. It, uh, I will create it and send it to Nancy, and she can just, so make sure that she's captured your email, or you can provide it to me. And I will be able to get those out to you. Yeah, so right. just leave it with me and see on your way out. And I if we don't have it already. I'm sorry, we're Go stepping ahead. on your toes. I wanted to interject also about, uh, you know, because we we talked about separating out your keep items and then leaving. You know, you, you have your other items. I'm gonna highly advocate that you let Dylan decide what's sellable and what's donatable because you may be donating something that he could sell for you. And so if you're going for the highest value. You know, let Dylan help work through that process as well. You know, when you get to that point, that would be, and then uh, then you can take it to the, I know that, that clearing out the trash immediately is wonderful because we do definitely want that, especially if it's old food. You know, get, get rid of that. <laughs> that can be stinky at times, but anyway, go ahead. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Yeah. And before I forget, because Dylan is one of the most humble people I've ever met, he didn't, he hasn't, he won't toot his own horn. But um, he will leave the house completely empty. So whatever doesn't sell, he will donate for you and leave your home room clean. So um, you are not left at the last minute with, oh my gosh, you know, can you find somebody to haul all this stuff off? He handles everything. Mary. Well, I have two questions. One, when do how, how do we begin this process? Do we contact you and you turn it. Because I'll, I'll put you in touch with whoever is best to answer that question for and my you. And my oh. second question, we have a lot of uh, crystal and china and silverware. Does he handle that sort of thing? Yes. He may not look like an expert. <laughs> <laughs> he may look like he's out there doing the job, you know, you know, and he's so wonderful at what he does, but he's so hands-on. I've asked him that question, too, and I've been delighted to find out that he has people and he's very okay. name uh, aware of uh, what your what items it are it is that what the item is that you're selling you you pick it up from there Dylan. yeah th there's not a whole lot that we wouldn't be able to give some kind of insight on to what the value of it would be okay. or or you know know what it is um, but anything that we do come across that is out of our league or realm of knowledge we have a wealth of contacts that we can reach out to and, and identify what's the best way to proceed with those items thank you what to you as well what's the <coughs> typical range because i know everybody's probably a little different a little unique depending on how much stuff they have but what would be a range you could expect that you feel is fair because you hear a lot of percentages that are um, kind of high and i was just thinking wondering what you thought as far as the distribution from yourself and the owner of the contents. Are, are you asking about like what the commission range would yeah, be on something? Yeah, sure. I don't know how it works. <clears throat> I mean, I would say nationally, the, and it would be the same with us. Nationally, the average um, in the estate sale industry is anywhere from thirty-five to fifty percent, okay. um, and we would fall into that realm. So, <clears throat> the way that we look at that is what the actual scope of the project is. So we look at what services are going to be required through that process. We look at how labor intensive the project is. 
and then we kind of balance that out against what the overall value of personal property we're going to be representing is um, and to fall somewhere within that range. Okay. okay. And also, yes, go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how to deal with sign number authenticated artwork? Yeah, it, it it would fall into the same the same answer really. Um, I mean, is there a market for it even outside of I, brokers? It you know it depends on what it is. I mean, if it, if you're talking about signed and numbered pieces, uh, then we're typically talking about prints, lithographs, seriographs, things like that. Most of those are not going to have a substantial value, right? Because they're not an original painting or original watercolor or, or an original piece of art. They're a copy of that. Um, some of them can ha have some value. Um, it just usually is not a significant. Okay, thank you. What, what about original paintings? So or, original paintings can, with again. Value. So it, it would depend. Um, there certainly are paintings that we have sold on our platform um, for thousands of dollars, over you know ten thousand um, dollars. If there was anything that was sim significant that we felt um, deserved to go somewhere else, that would cap you know capitalize you the best return, we would certainly do that for you. Well, what we do with each, especially original paintings, is look up the artists. We look up through the databases that we have memberships with to go through and see what the most recent prices have obtained by that artist. decluttering group on Zoom for over two years now. Mm -hmm. We meet weekly for a couple of hours and it's great to have the accountability and set an intention of what am I going to do today. But the idea of downsizing terrifies me. Mm -hmm. And um, I happen to be a renter. I didn't know this was for homeowners. Um, um, but nonetheless, if I have to give up a room of furniture and each piece of furniture is serving a function, you know, it's holding stuff or I'm using it for something. Any tips on how to do that downsizing? Because the focus today sounds more <coughs> on decluttering than the downsizing part. So could somebody address that? that Are you actually question? planning a downsize? Would you it like may to make happen, a downsize? It's not intentionally, but it may, I may be forced to. I would think a one-on-one -on -one with Clarice mm -hmm. is in order because you need to you need some specifics mm -hmm. okay. uh you know i think that's great that you're involved in a group chat but they're not in your house no and this is what clarice is really really good at so have a conversation yeah. with her i'd be happy to talk to with you after her initial consultations are free mm -hmm. and then she'll give you an estimate yeah so okay uh, i find um in my experience also when you declutter your loved one's home that's in their 80s 90s and you do it gradually you're also preventing fall prevention mm -hmm. because you're getting things up off the floor and and there's a bigger walkway for them to get from point a to point b if i may tag on yes. to what charmaine said so one of the things that we do, whether we are relocating, we um, will go in and do, we are assessing the home, which is why we do the free consultation. We want to see the whole scope of the project, the home, the space, and everything. So we'll go in and actually do the space planning. We measure. We measure your furniture. We know where it's going to fit. Um, and we know then what your storage systems are. And if we need to, we also have the capability of actually implementing and installing the storage solutions for you. So, um, but it's all about from the, uh, I'm, it's called aging in place or staying in place, you know, assessments. And so when we are placing furniture, when we've relocated you and we're actually doing the unpack and the staging of the home, three and a half feet between, so a walker or a wheelchair or things like that will go in, you know, do you need things brought down? So all of that is very much so in, in the decluttering process or the thinking when we talked about defining a home, 
that needs to be, you know, things like that need to be considered. But yeah, I'd be happy to talk. Okay, great. Afterwards. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. We have a great lineup of, se of seminars coming up this year, for the rest of the year. Our next one is Aging in Place, the yeah. ins and outs of staying put and not moving. And we have another one, uh, that one will be on May 3rd. It's a Wednesday. And it'll be here, except downstairs. And uh, we have Living to be 100. Okay, nice. What are some of the other ones we do? We have Moving Mom and Dad. Moving Mom and Dad, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, I have it on my Yeah, We have a bunch <laughs> of topics. Lined up, but living to be a hundred is always a fun one. Uh, how to pay for retirement living, uh, living with uh, memory or dementia and memory, the truth about memory and dementia care. So, we have a wide variety of topics. We have uh, trust attorneys who come and speak about getting things in order. How many of you have a trust? Okay. How many have looked at your trust in the last year? Yeah. That's very good. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. Most people, what I do is I'll, the first thing I'll ask them is, do, they, do you have a trust? And if they do, they'll say, oh, yeah, we have a trust. And I'll say, when, when's the last time you had it updated? And they'll say, oh, uh, well, uh, I don't think we have, and our attorney's dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so or, or, or we didn't like them, you know. And that's okay. You do not have to go back to your original attorney. We have wonderful attorneys here locally that we can refer to you. You just bring in your trust, and they will update it for you. Because something, if you haven't looked at or updated your trust in the last five years, then or even less, mm -hmm. chances are something pretty significant has changed, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that. Um, and not, and a lot of times, trusts weren't. You know, all all attorneys aren't the same. Just like all real estate people aren't the same. The um, we've seen a lot of trusts that were very poorly written mm -hmm. 10, 20 years mm -hmm. ago. And so just to make sure it's written properly and that your heirs don't have any unnecessary burdens after you're gone is really, really important. So I can't stress that enough. For any uh, referrals, just give us a call. All of our panelists uh, and uh, Charmaine, our sponsor, have materials in the back. But if you lose them, the only number you really need to hold on to is Seco Seniors because we can put you in touch with anybody at any time. Okay, so thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our wonderful panelists. Another round. Thank you. Thank you.